In today's webinar, we are going to be talking about module five, marketing campaigns. And joining us to do that is John Chapman. Welcome, John. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Now, Javier's Links is the leading global healthcare communications group who are dedicated to changing the way the world does healthcare communications for the better. And John, you are their chief creative officer. You have a presentation prepared, so I know we're in very good hands. I'm going to come off screen and leave the floor to you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so afternoon, everyone. Um, slightly strange, I can't see any of you, but that's fine. Uh, I'll look at myself and, and get through this. Uh, I appreciate being asked along to chat this afternoon. Uh, hopefully some of you will find value and uh, some of you will find this interesting at least. So let me share my um, slides and you should be able to see a screen now with uh, hello on it. So firstly, um, you're probably wondering uh, who I am and what on earth Havas Links is. So my name is John Chapman, as Charlotte mentioned, and I'm what's called the Chief Creative Officer at uh, an advertising agency. Now, the ad agency specialises in healthcare and pharmaceutical work. So um, what used to be something that was kind of the back of people's minds is now the forefront of, of everybody's consciousness thanks to um, this pandemic we've all been living through and, and the effect of COVID to healthcare is firmly on most people's agendas these days. Uh, but we are an agency based in Manchester and we are about 550 strong. And I'll explain a little bit shortly about it. And we, we, we specialize in, in healthcare. And what that means is we create advertising and marketing campaigns that raise awareness around certain conditions or diseases or ailments to help you understand them, to help general public go to doctors, go to GPs, go to specialists and talk about it should they think uh, they are affected by them. And we also market product-led campaigns and that is for treatments. So you will hardly ever see these in, in the UK or Europe uh, probably across most of your lives because you can't uh, market or advertise directly to the general public because of regulations and laws and things like that. If you go to the United States or North America, um, you will see hundreds of these adverts on TV because you can market directly and advertise directly to the general public. We do that as well. And it's, again, lots and lots of different products for lots of different uh, what are called therapy areas, so conditions. Uh, and they range from the, the smaller ailments like uh, eczema, like uh, aching joints, like gout in your feet or, or, or whatever, uh, nail problems and things like that, to very, very, very serious conditions such as cancers, and uh, skin diseases like psoriasis or um, HIV and, and the, whole, the whole spectrum of health and COVID for that matter. We, we've been doing a lot of work on the, on the COVID-19 vaccine uh, with AstraZeneca in this country and the Pfizer vaccine in the US. So in a nutshell, we do a lot of medical-based advertising I'm not personally from a medical background. I'm from a from a uh, what's called a consumer advertising background. Um, again, I'll come on to talk about that and make my kind of path towards this type of thing. But we're called Havas Links Group. Our website is havaslinks.com. We are based in Manchester and we have a big office in King's Cross in London as well. And we are part of a global network. Now that global network is uh, headquartered in Manhattan in New York, and there is offices all around the world. Have us links being one of them in the UK. So this is kind of sums up what we do as an agency and its impact that matters. So this is what you would call a, a vision statement or, a, or a, what your proposition as company, um, what we purport to do. And that's why our clients come to us uh, for creative work. Now, creative work in advertising is something that communicates um, a, a message of obviously, um, but but more most importantly, it uses creativity to solve a business problem, and that's what you know. It's consumer creativity that solves a business problem. That's what advertising generally does. Um, these these sentences here are 
the summation of really, really big campaigns that we've done globally and across Europe um, in these different areas. So helping kids with arthritis, talk without words, was a piece of work where we had uh, a wristband designed and it was for children under the age of eight who suffered from a particular type of arthritis. And we found out that the insight is kids don't like to draw attention to themselves and put their hands up in class if, if our you know, elbows or their wrists or their fingers are hurting due to the arthritis. So we designed this band where it was white on one side, red on the other, they turned it over and it was red. The teacher was aware of this and they took them out of the classroom and they got the nurse to kind of help them didn't have to draw attention. It was all kind of uh, worked through that way. So power of creativity to solve real problems in real, real, real people's lives in the real world, um, which is what we try to do. Later on in the, in the presentation, I have two or three pieces of work and film that we can, I can share with you um, just so you get a sense of the type of work that we do. So, um, I had put the slide in thinking I'd be able to see you and, and we could interact, uh, but we'll run it anyway. Normally we would say, hands up who is creative and who considers themselves creative. And you'd be astonished at the amount of people that don't put their hands up. Now, if you would like to pursue in a, a career or a job in advertising or marketing, um, you're gonna have to start believing in yourself that you are creative. And in all honesty, the majority of people are. It's just comes out in lots of different ways. Being creative doesn't mean that you're going to paint a brilliant picture or you're going to write an amazing song or you're going to come up with wacky stories or anything like that. You can do all of those things. Being creative in an advertising agency or a marketing agency means that you have to apply your creativity um, to be able to solve a problem. Now, when we talk about solving problems, it's what's called a brief from a client. And the brief will articulate what the client's uh, communication objectives are. So in the world of marketing, you have to understand um, a business need uh, versus a, a customer need, or you have to identify the need in the marketplace. And advertising is one component of, of marketing. I actually had to look that up this morning because I couldn't really uh, differentiate that when I thought about it myself because there's lots and lots of overlap these days. And when you work in a big, busy agency, there's lots of functions uh, that, that, that cover all of these different aspects. Um, creativity is incredibly important for marketing and advertising because it's what sets you apart. It's what makes you stand out. It's what gets somebody's attention. It's what makes somebody interested in what you're saying. If you don't do that, Nobody will read your message or watch your film or view your social media campaign or watch your TikTok videos. It has to grab their attention. So it has to be created from the off and it has to stand out. That's the first rule of any kind of advertising work. Uh, but there's, there's other reasons why it's really important. And this isn't me being glib or silly or trying to uh, play it to the crowd. There's three main reasons why I believe it's super important. It's fun. When you join the world of work, when you leave school, when you leave college, when you leave university, whatever your path is, you've got a long time that you have to spend at work. Now, you will hear this from a lot of people, including your family, your parents, your friends, or in people that work for a living. So you have to enjoy it because, believe me, you're going to spend a lot of time at work and it can get boring and it can be a slog and it can take it out of you. So if you can make it interesting and fun, it will make your life a lot better. The second brilliant thing about creativity is it changes people's minds. Now, if you think about that for a second, your influence, your idea, and the way you present it, or the way you write it, or the way you, you know, draw it, or visualize it, or you, the way you write a film, it will change somebody's mind about something. So in healthcare, that's really, really important because if you're poorly, and you don't know what to do, and you watch a piece of film that explains something to you, if it feels right to you, hopefully it'll make you think differently about it, and you could end up going to a doctor, you could go to a specialist, you could go to a hospital, and you would get the treatment that you need. So it's really, really interesting, and it's really, really important. And thirdly, it's contrarian. So to stand out, to be fun, to make a difference, to change somebody's mind, you have to go against the norm. You have to go against the status quo uh, because it'll just 
get enveloped in a sea of all the other hundreds of thousands of pieces of information that you view every single day. If you think about when you log on to social media, when you look on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or Snapchat, you are bombarded by messages. How many of those do you remember at the end of the day? Probably less than 1%. When you walk down the street, same thing happens. When you drive a car, same thing happens. When you go online, it's, you are bombarded. Now, our job is to come up with an idea that cuts through all of the noise and stands out in somebody's mind. That's the powerful side of it. And being contrarian means you go against the grain to be able to stand out and be able to be interested and be able to hold somebody's attention. Now, this all sounds kind of big and difficult and abstract, uh, but it isn't. It really isn't. And you can be creative to solve problems in everyday settings. So I'm going to share two pieces of, of news clippings that I came across that show the power of creativity. Now, this is in marketing or advertising, but it's how you apply it. So it's a very familiar problem that's up and down the country. Uh, schools get full of park cars outside them twice a day, every morning, every evening when parents go to pick their kids up. The pollution that those cars produce causes a lot of problems, not only for the climate in general, but for the immediate area and the immediate environment of kids coming out of schools. And it, the, the a research program found that a lot of young children were suffering developing asthma and, and, and lung problems uh, because of this. So a head teacher um, in Greater Manchester came up with a brilliant idea of going, if we make the children traffic wardens and give out you know false tickets to the parents that are parking their cars it'll change their mind and it did it worked it stopped the parents parking because if you just tell somebody what to do or what not to do generally they don't listen that's human nature nobody wants to be told what to do but if you do it in an interesting way and you highlight the problem and you use the people to communicate that message then it becomes interesting and in this case it becomes newsworthy so that's a brilliant brilliant piece of everyday creativity that uses smart bit of thinking to solve a really big problem uh, and it was for free it wasn't a marketing campaign it wasn't advertising it was done for one school in manchester that changed the way that people drop their kids off and pick them up so again brilliant example the next one uh, is, a, is another genius idea and it just made us laugh because it's a bit rude and cheeky and all the rest of it. So if you if you cycle, if you ride a bike, there's lots and lots of potholes on streets up and down the country, uh, wherever you are in England, roads are pretty terrible. Um, potholes for cyclists can cause real injuries and danger. So if you hit a pothole quite hard, if you fly up a bike, break your arm, smash your head in, bruise your legs, whatever, it hurts. So a cyclist took in, in, in his own hands of trying to get these potholes filled up by the, the council. Most councils don't have a lot of money, bottom of the list, didn't want to tarmac it and make the road safe. So he threw big willies around them in uh, spray paint. That caught the attention of the local news. Council doesn't like being on the news and they fixed them all literally within two days. Now again, different way to solve a problem, but creatively brilliant because it's using something that again doesn't cost a lot of money and it goes against what the council stands for which is decency and cleanliness and they would clean it up straight away that's the contrarian bit about what we talk about you use your ideas to go against the grain but be smart about it because it solves a problem and potentially has saved somebody's life from hitting that pothole and falling uh, off that bike so what does this all mean? Well, very simply, it means creativity is commonly used to solve problems. Problems exist all over the world, every day in everyone's life, and especially for businesses because they have to generate money to sell a product, to provide a service, to employ people that work there. So there's a continuous stream of problems, business problems, that agencies like myself, that people like myself and agencies like have our slings, uh, get briefed on on a daily basis and we have to work in teams to be able to come up with ideas to solve those problems and we present them back to clients and they buy them and then we go and produce them. So how do you plan a marketing campaign? Well, 
generally th there's a million things that go into this stuff and i'd probably bore you all to death if, if we went through them all but very simply the, the easiest way that you can kind of answer this question with another question is it boils down to these three things when you plan a marketing campaign it's what do you want who's it for and why are we doing it so if the client or a business can answer that those three things then you're off to a really strong start because you have a clear idea of what they intend to do what you know if it's a product that they're selling maybe it's running trainers and um, they want to sell more trainers because they might have created a new soul for them like night did for for athletes who is it for well it could be for athletes or it could be for people that just like running and why are we doing it well first and foremost if you're a business it's probably to make profit make make, make money and um, two it's probably because it furthers the cause of the spirit of running and thirdly it's um a competitive advantage so it makes that business stand out so once you start to understand, and there'll be multiple answers to these three questions, once you understand that, that gives you a starting point to be able to plan your campaign. Now, a marketing campaign generally these days is pretty big, pretty complicated with lots of different channels. But at the core of it is an advertising campaign, is a thought, and it's what you call like a big idea. And it's one single-minded idea that then spreads out across all of these different channels. Um, and these cha when we talk about channels, it's things like websites, YouTube, TV, still people watch TV. So it could be adverts on, on the ad break. It could be social media. So all the different platforms that people use. It could be print in a magazine. It could be a leaflet that I push through someone's door. It could be a digital um, interactive screen in a big congress or exhibition. It could be a game. Uh, it could be part of a part of Fortnite, for example, where where there's it, it opens itself up to creative ideas, so we can we can get a message out there. So there's hundreds of different ways you can express an idea to be able to plan a campaign. But when you do that, there's generally two questions that you need to know about from a creative point of view whether you're providing a service for you for your client or your or the business or you're selling the product. And most people in the real world of everyday life need to know two things. What's it called? What does it do? Now, you, if you don't answer those two things when you're advertising the product, you failed because people will be none the wiser. They might like what you've done. You might create a beautiful idea and shoot a lovely piece of film. But if you don't communicate what the product name is and what it is i how it helps somebody uh, or what service it provides or how it can you know better somebody's life no one will listen no one will remember more importantly so then you've wasted all that time all that effort and all that money from a client and budget to no ends to no avail so these are just things to get you in the right frame of mind and things to consider when you come to do this type of thing. Now, again, it won't just be on you as an individual. When you work in an agency, um, especially an advertising agency, you cover a lot of things, as mentioned, um, you know, film, TV, press, branding, congress, social, et cetera, et cetera. There's generally two sides of an ad agency, and one is creative ideas how we write it, how we visualize it, how we come up with that idea, and then the graphic design, so how that's designed, how that's created, how that's produced. Um, and there's lots of people that are involved in this. Um, I'm part of the creative department, and that's one department in the agency. The other departments in the agency are um, you know, strategy and planners, and, and these are the people that do research and uh, insights and, and look at the market and look at um, what the need is and then look for something that other people don't see. And that, that's what an insight is. So they observe and they research and they talk to people and they look at behaviors and then the insight is what the conclusion from those that research that they've found. Because Harvest Links Group is a, is a healthcare agency, we have medical people in it. So there's a there's the agency can be split into, into two really when I describe it. So you've got creative folks on one side, which that list is there, and that's all the different people that are part of the creative department, and the folks on the right. Generally, the folks on the right, the strategists, planners, medical writers, client services, they're the really like academically smart people. So you know, have PhDs, 
uh, have masters and things, especially the medical guys, they are super smart. And that's brilliant for people like me, who are generally smart in a different way. Uh, maybe a bit more emotionally intelligent, maybe intelligent in the way that you, how you communicate something or think of ideas, uh, but not academically brilliant. I'm just speaking for myself. There's lots of creative people that are academically brilliant, and it's a real mix. The point being, there's there's space for everybody here. You don't necessarily have to have a degree to join an advertising agency. If you do have a degree, great, that's fantastic. That may get you into a certain uh, position. You know, medical guys absolutely have to because it's it's a it's a legal requirement if you're writing kind of something that deals with somebody's health. Um, but there's plenty of people at the agency that come with just a book full of good ideas and we sit down, we review and go, do you know what, you would fit in here and you would do a great job. So again, there's lots of different ways in. So the next few slides, um, we'll, I'll show you some work actually, um, just so I don't, I'm not rattling on for, uh, for half an hour or 40 minutes and there's, th there's three pieces of work I'd like to show you. Um, they cover different diseases. Uh, one is HIV, I'll show you uh, a piece of film for it, and then one is hemo what's, what's called haemophilia, which is a, a blood disorder, and there's a piece of film for that. And then finally, we just created a book that tackles dyslexia and how we diagnose it, so I'll show a piece of film for that. So before we I, I, I change my screen, we, the, the client came to us and said, we need to communicate to the general public that uh, a disease called HIV is on the rise again. Now, uh, depending on your age, you may or may not have heard of HIV or you may have a perception of it. It comes with a lot of baggage. It started in the 80s. There's a lot of stigma, there's a lot of misconception around it. It's just a virus and it affects everybody. Um, and it's contracted through having sex or uh, like bodily fluids and things like that or you know, blood uh, exchanges. It's a tattoos and cuts and bruises and stuff. Um, however, it, it it's, can be managed. There's lots of good treatments for it. And they basically said that we wanted to, because it's on the rise, you want people to go to that doctor as if they're not feeling great and recognise the symptoms. So that was the brief. That's the problem that we had to solve. So I will very quickly just um, swap screens and I will play a piece of film uh, to show you how we tackle that problem. So just bear with me one second. And I'm really hoping you can see and hear this. Hello, I'm Val. Of course, hello Val. Take a seat and tell me what I can help you with. Well, Doctor, I came here last week to see you with a sore throat, and then the week before with an ache in my back and neck. I see. I have these disgusting cold sores that just won't go away. I have a rash all over my chest. I keep sweating during the night, and I've lost weight. <laughs> I've had diarrhea for at least 10 days in a row and I am absolutely shattered. What do you think it could be? Recognising the changing face of HIV can help you diagnose it sooner. With one simple blood test, you can make all the difference. Don't think twice, think test. So that was a piece of film that we've done um, for somebody called Beave Healthcare. And uh, that was, as it, as it says, to direct people to doctors if they have common symptoms. It wasn't to frighten anybody, it was just to make them go and get checked out. So the screen you can see now, um, you, it wasn't just a piece of film. It, there was lots of posters, there was a there was a website, there was a social media campaign, so it kind of touched on lots of different aspects of, of, of the market mix. Um, but it's for a very serious subject, but it doesn't mean that you can not you, you can be creative with it. And again, it was it was to convey something that was very important in a way that people understood and could 
uh, members relate to because you have lots and lots of different people that we cast as uh, the characters in that film. Some are stereotypes, some aren't, and all that meant was uh, people that might associate HIV with and, the, and people that they don't. But again, the message is it affects everybody. So that was one piece of film. I'll move through these quite quickly because I think there'll be some questions afterwards, hopefully, and we can, um, we, we can keep chatting. The next idea is very different, and it was to communicate um, something called haemophilia and how it uh, affects teenagers and young adults and their sex lives. Uh, because a lot of people with haemophilia, haemophilia is a condition where your blood doesn't clot, so it can be very dangerous. So if you cut yourself and you bleed, um, normally uh, your blood clots and it scabs over and, and you're fine. Um, this can be super dangerous if you have haemophilia because it doesn't clot. Or if you have internal cuts or bruises and things like that, it can, it can lead to serious complications. Um, so we created this campaign to speak to that audience, probably around your age and a little bit older, um, to, to see how we could uh, how, how we could communicate this message. So again, I'm just gonna switch screens uh, and I'll show you a piece of film, uh, which is two minutes long, and then we'll move on. Social media has given global issues like body confidence a platform to finally get the attention they deserve. But a section of society has been left behind, young men with haemophilia. Social listening from our wider campaign, Haemophilia, highlighted a critical unmet need. Their body confidence issues meant that they were missing out on vital aspects of life, love and physical relationships. Haemophilia is a rare disease affecting blood's ability to clot, leading to problems like internal bleeding and excruciating joint pain. We know joint pain limits exercise, but it also affects sex, which is why they worry partners won't understand their condition, or that it makes them physically unattractive, or that it might affect their sexual performance. Like many young men, they're also embarrassed to talk openly about sex, relationships, and their feelings. So we started the conversation for them. Well, yes, we were having the sex, weren't we? By talking about sex in the same way they do, using the social language of emojis, bringing them to life, and putting them back onto social media. We produced a series of social films with a range of couples at different stages of their relationships, talking about real ancient issues. Well, we started to get a bit more serious, hadn't we? And I just came out with it. He just texted me like, I'll be a bit late, got to take my medication. I've got hemophilia. So we started talking about having children. So we started talking about hemophilia again. The first time we made love. Oh, we just call it sex. We spoke to patients and their partners to get honest insights into how they manage hemophilia in their relationship, giving us credible social content. I used to get nosebleeds all the time. And I joined them and come up like this. Oh yeah, I had that nosebleed, didn't I, remember? These couples made haemophiliacs feel comfortable with their condition and showed them that there's nothing to be afraid of. Except for when you met down. After a Valentine's Day release, a time when patients would be feeling increased pressure on their love life, in four weeks, we had 1.5 million impressions, really? And 42,000 visits to our patient support site. Really? I'm so glad. Here, they can access curated content on sex and relationships. Mm -hmm. I like that. We broke down barriers and turned what's notoriously difficult to talk about into engaging with relevant social content that spoke to young men with haemophilia in a new way, showing them that having a love life and haemophilia doesn't have to be complicated. <laughs> uh, great, so hopefully you would have uh, just seen that piece of film. So it's really interesting because the reason the reason I'm, I'm, I'm showing you this stuff is there's lots of different aspects to it. So those models had to be made. So if you're good at making things with your hands, there's, there's a role for you. Every word you heard on that script, on that piece of film has to be written. So if you're like writing and you're like communicating that way, that has to be written and somebody has to say it as a, as a voiceover. Um, and you have to come up with the idea. You have to come up with the idea to be able to go, right, we'll get these two fruits talking to each other, this vegetable and this fruit, because, and there's reason behind it, 
people communicate that way these days on, on uh, text. Um, and it's really interesting, not only is it a brilliant, lovely idea and it communicates something in a way that people will remember, uh, you get the chance to work with really interesting folks. So we, we use a company called Ardman Animations to make that piece of film. Ardman are the guys that made Wallace and Gromit. So that's why they, they all look kind of similar. Um, and, and all those wonderful films. So we went to their studio and, and, and worked with model makers and they photographed it and they animated it and it's all stop frame animation. So it's, um, you know, the mouth has moved this bit and then take photo and this bit and take photo. So it's amazing because you get you get a glimpse into that world so it becomes really, really interesting. Um, in the aspect of time, I'll, I'll, I'll just push on a little bit and show you the final piece of work uh, that, that I wanted to share with you guys today. And it's again, it's different. Uh, we created a children's book. We wrote and illustrated a book um, for kids under six, I think it was. Um, and we, we, the, the idea was to try and diagnose uh, something called dyslexia. So dyslexia is a very, very common condition which affects your spelling um, and it affects your reading. And it has a lot of other effects as well. Your confidence when you talk to people, how you describe things, how you fill out forms, all that type of thing. But it's hugely common. It, it, it affects lots and lots of people. A lot of people in our, our advertising uh, agency suffer from dyslexia as well. So this is one of the reasons we've done it. We created a book, but it doesn't, and it's a test. But the kids that are reading it don't realise it's a test. Only the parents do at the end. So it's just a lovely story, but that's, that's illustrated in a way that holds their attention. So again, I'll just flip my screen to show you a piece of film um, and this will be the final one for today and then I'll be able to answer some of your questions. So hopefully this will play in, in here this also. Despite dyslexia affecting up to 870,000 children in the UK, less than 150,000 are actually diagnosed, leaving them without the vital support they need at a key time in their learning development. We needed to find a way to help parents spot signs of dyslexia. Introducing Andy Goes, the children's book that turns stressful tests into a bedtime routine. Working in collaboration with specialist dyslexia teachers, we took complex dyslexia screening tools and turned them into a bedtime routine, testing the child without them knowing they were being tested. The story was written to include key factors in early signs of dyslexia. The majority of the story used Fry's first 100 words, the first words that children by the age of six should be able to read. Failure to grasp these could be a key indicator. The muddled mountain became a key feature within the story, helping to highlight any issues with corrective partial decoding. This is where a child with dyslexia might find it difficult to fully visualize the words in their head. So, mountain, will become motorbike. The way the book was designed also acts as a detector. Off-white backgrounds are easier for a child with dyslexia to read than darker backgrounds. To ensure children don't feel like they're being tested, the guide for parents was designed to look like publisher's details, allowing them to get a genuine assessment of their child's reading ability. Andy Goes was made free to access to anyone who wanted it. Launched on World Book Day, Andy Goes made its way into thousands of homes. Schools began adding the book to their educational materials and the book has been adopted across the globe, from the Bahamas to Australia, giving more children a better chance of diagnosis. Okay, so uh, there we are, uh, three different, completely different pieces of work. The reason I wanted to show you guys uh, this today is to show that there's lots of different ways to produce advertising work and marketing campaigns. You've got films, you've got social media stuff, you've got a physical book that you read. Now, whether you like researching these things, there's a role that you can play there. Whether you like coming up with ideas to be able to how to, how to communicate the uh, the solution to a problem that comes from a client, there's a role for you there. Whether you are good at drawing and illustrating, there's a role for you there. Whether you're good at uh, acting or behind the camera 
or you want to do voiceovers or you're interested in how films are made and put together there's a role for you it's it, it it's hugely varied what we do and some of it can be academic and technical and uh, specific and some of it can be very broad and very creative and and um, can reach lots and lots of people so again it's it's hugely vary the type of work we do at the agency um, and you know we select lots of different channels and how we measure the success is generally how we help people uh, so the business objectives aside from clients how much money they make how many uh, units they ship is one thing but the real success is how you help somebody and that's the reason I work in in healthcare advertising because I get to be creative uh, in a way that helps someone in their everyday life what we do is we provide commercial ideas that solve business problems for clients. That's one side of it. Things like the book for dyslexia are helping children be able to be diagnosed with it and get help so they can read, write and understand uh, things better later on in life. The HIV idea gets people in front of a doctor so they can get tested for a condition and the haemophilia idea, the, the, the peach and aubergine talking to each other tackles a sensitive subject that people of a certain age are, are maybe embarrassed about in a way that opens up a conversation. That's the real impact, and they're the reasons that it matters for, for what we do. Um, very quickly, I, I know I'm kind of running out of time. Uh, I started working in advertising about 16, 17 years ago in uh, Newcastle, in the northeast of England, uh, where I grew up. Um, there's not a huge amount of advertising work here. I worked in lots of different agencies and companies, and then I decided to move to London uh, because that's basically all the big big agencies are. On my way to London, I got sidetracked and went to Manchester um, to, to attend a party. I stayed there for a weekend, and I ended up picking up some freelance work to do creative ideas. I then ended up working in an agency, and I've lived there for the past 17 years. Um, I've stayed there. I've never actually made it to London. So uh, Manchester's a great place. There's lots of creative stuff going on. And I started as a junior, uh, what's called a junior art director. And you go in and you think of ideas. And then I've done a bit of graphic design work. And then I went back art direction. And then I worked around lots of different agencies. I ended up at Havas Links. And I worked my way up and through all the different levels. And I'm now the chief creative officer. So I sit on the board and I oversee all of the creative work for the, for the agency. As a very quick, small, potted history of how I got there. But all it takes is good ideas, in my, in my instance, for, for, for my role in, in the agency. That's how you, you get to where you need to be. If you're really good at writing, do that. If you're really good at coming up with ideas, do that. If you're really good at research, do that. Find what you're good at, keep doing it, and you will get to where you want to be. That would be the advice. So after seeing those ideas, I would now ask, you know, hands up who he has creative and hopefully you're all sitting at home or wherever you are putting hands up going, do you know what? I can probably do a role there and I would love to be able to do something like that. Well, I hope so. And um, there is room and there is space and there is lots and lots of different roles within a creative agency where you could most definitely uh, take part in. Um, I will leave you with this. When you get involved in a, in a, in a role or a job where you are surrounded by creative people or you come up with ideas for a living and you make money from it and that's what you do it's um it's contagious it makes you want to do more it makes the people around you want to do more um so i will leave you with that creativity is contagious please pass it on and that will be uh, my final uh, say on the matter which i believe um i now have to answer some questions for you lovely people um so i will just scroll through hi charlotte hello thank you so much for that presentation that was fantastic and i think those videos i mean i've personally never seen them um i thought they were fantastic really really good so thank you that was a really really good insight into not only the company but into marketing in general um we've got about five minutes um to answer some questions and there have been quite a few um so let's start off with what is the most important thing for a marketing campaign to succeed um, the most important thing is that it gets somebody's attention. So if, if it doesn't get anybody's attention in the very first few seconds of somebody seeing it, yeah. everything else is wasted. 
So it could be the best thing in the world. It could be the most researched thing. It could be the most well-funded. You could have famous people in it. You could have brilliant minds on it. But if somebody doesn't pay attention to it very quickly, you've you've lost them. And as I mentioned before, you see a lot of things on a daily basis, day in, day out. And if your idea doesn't stand out, your marketing campaign doesn't stand out in a way that's relevant to what you're trying to say and attract somebody's attention, then you'll never ever get them to pay attention, to watch it, to read it, to understand it, to change what you want them to change. So it has to be interesting. Great, thank you. What was your favorite marketing campaign? Um, of all time, or of all of, time. Um, I mean, I'm probably a lot older than the the, the folks on this call, but they're the my favourite ad. Uh, well, there's two. The very recent one that's been on TV is is called Womb Stories, and it's um from Body Form, and it's you know the, uh, about sanitary products, but it, it tackles it in a very different way, and it shows lots and lots of different stories from different women of different ages in a way that's never been done before. And it's very sensitive, it's very smart, it's super intelligent, and it's a beautiful piece of work. And I defy anybody, man, male or female, to watch that and not feel something because it is astonishingly good. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, it's very good, and a very old camp or an older campaign, which is fa a favourite of mine, is for uh, a drink called Southern Comfort, which is um, a, a bourbon, and it's an overweight guy walking down a beach in a pair of speedos, and it's probably one of the best pieces of film, thirty seconds of film you'll ever watch, um, yeah. and there's, there's no exactly. video on it at all. It just makes you feel really good. It's excellent. It is excellent. I think everyone knows exactly which one you're talking about, even when you just say the guy in the speedos. <laughs> um, what, what can, this is from obviously a student, what can I do now to help get experience for a marketing job in the future? Really good question. So any problem that you come across, if you're creatively minded, try and think of a way around it. How would you solve that problem? Now, that sounds really vast and really big and vague, but those examples I use are everyday things, you know, pollution outside of school, potholes on the road. It might be, you might see somebody that with a walking stick that's struggling across the road. How do you help that person? How do you come up with an idea to make their life a little bit easier? It might not even be that. It might be like, you know, you want a new pair of trainers. How do you, how do you come up with a creative way to try and, convince somebody to buy those trainers or whatever the product is. The more you can demonstrate that you can think around problems and you get around things and you can produce something that's different and communicates uh, something to somebody, that's the best, that's honestly the best experience you can do. And if you put, put, present that to somebody like myself or somebody at an agency and, they, and you've proactively done it off your own back, that, that's like maximum brownie points. That gets you right in front of everybody else that's in the interview process because it shows you care and you're enthusiastic about it. Yeah, and for sure, really, really proactive. It's definitely going to be a plus when you're interviewing against lots of other people. How do you make yourself stand out? Fantastic, thank you. Um, we've got time for one last question, which is what is your favorite part of the job? The favorite part of my job is there's two things that it coming up with ideas and being and being creative because it's literally thinking of something from nothing and it's it, but it's applying it it's it's yeah. and, and it's 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 coming up with a different way to do something or a different way to say something and the other part of that is working with people that do that as well so i get over i see a lot of very brilliantly talented creative people and it's a joy because you get to sit around chatting and produce something, whether it's an illustration, whether it's a film, whether it's a song, whether it's a, a, a poster, whatever that is. Um, and when we research these things, we get to watch films, we get to listen to music, we get to go out and talk to all different uh, weird and wonderful people. So it's super interesting and it's very varied and every day is different. So that is most definitely a favorite part of my job. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'd love to be a fly on the wall when you're having sort of a meeting with all your creatives bouncing ideas off each other. It must be one of those moments where you just think, gosh, there's so many fantastic creative people in this room. It must feel really good. 
It is, it is, yeah. And believe it or not, they're not always good ideas. There's lots of very terrible that's ideas, and that's course. fine. That's part of it. Uh, but we talk about it, and we make them good. So yeah. Amazing. Well, that brings us to a wrap on this session. Uh, John, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here today. Um, your presentation was fantastic. And thanks for bringing so much enthusiasm and excitement to it. Um, it's been uh, a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.